evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is September 14th and everybody's here except Lonnie. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of August 10th? So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. We have a motion to approve the minutes of August 19th. So moved. Do a second. Second. All in favor? All right, we're going to go into new business. I'm going to move a couple things around. Um, we're going to move Bruce um, C, public safety recognition, up to the first one, please, if we could. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, so I'd like to start off, give a real brief overview of a uh, of an incident we had recently, and and get some thank yous out there to the folks that that helped us out, and made this possible. Uh, the 10th of August, we were summoned at about uh, 15, uh, 3, 14 in the afternoon, to a single uh, engine response for a smoke investigation. I happened to be headed from the office to town hall up the back side of the lake and I looked up just as they said the approximation of the address and said, oh, that's not just a smoke investigation, it was a column of black smoke. So we upgraded the call quickly to a desk box assignment which brings mutual aid, uh, that's our structural fire response in women's terms, I guess. And um, it, eventually we ended up with over 10 departments involved including us, Casco, New Gloucester, Wyndham, Standish, Gray, Poland, Otisfield and an unheard of Westbrook mm -hmm. in town, uh, actually on scene fighting the fire and many other uh, uh, departments including Gorm, North Yarmouth, Cumberland, etc. who backfilled other stations, <coughs> I understand it even reached as far as Freeport. Um, unfortunately that's becoming the norm just to get uh, 30 firefighters on scene. Of course today if you remember back in that time frame it was about a 92 degree day with about 99 percent humidity uh, so we're wearing our firefighters out really, really quickly. Um, we quickly depleted all our drinking water on scene, and uh, I called Don and I called Nathan to see what we could do about getting some more drinking water brought to the scene. And shortly thereafter, we had Don drive, walking up the driveway with a five-gallon drinking jug from Town Hall, and Public Works had gone to uh, the Dollar Store, I believe, in Bridgeton, and loaded his truck up with uh, with cases of water and gallon jugs and cups and everything so we could get them back here for the crews who were quickly going into rehab and not so quickly coming out because they were quickly dehydrating themselves. We had a couple folks that were treated in the ambulances that were there uh, by mutual aid crews, <coughs> etc., uh, and then put back into the, into the operation. All in all, the operation was a big success. Um, we had the chief of Wyndham at the boat landing down on Crescent. He was pumping water with their engine. He was alone. He was filling tank trucks. The tank trucks that were running back to the scene at 505 Webbs Mills or White House Farm Lane, it's his other name, I guess. Um, and uh, Deputy Chief Holmquist was there from Gray running that end of the water supply. Uh, on scene itself, we had uh, primarily us, Wyndham, and Gray units at first. And at the very beginning, we had three of us who were actual firefighters and one probationary. And that was about the first 15 minutes with that small of a crew. Uh, we all did uh, uh, some extravagant work, I guess, or extreme work, and got hose lines in place, and, and it made the difference in, the, in saving this 1800s farmhouse from the garage and the barn that was burning. Um, but all in all, I wanted to get that out there that, that we, you know, we sent out thank you notes after the fact to all those departments, thanking them for their, their efforts uh, and their sweat, literally. And uh, I just wanted to come here tonight to make sure that we did that officially and that uh, there's another thank you that really needs to be, to be made. Uh, after the fire was over and we're picking up and I'm looking down the driveway and I uh, had already <coughs> summoned, actually, Nate, you'd been back and forth three times, I think, at that point. Yeah. I, we called him in to help tear part of the building down with the backhoe, which he did, and we sacrificed the hydraulic line and part of his windshield on his backhoe, rear, back rear window on the backhoe, oh. because a piece of building came off and hit it. Uh, then he had to go, he left and he came back because the Wyndham ladder truck, which we positioned to cut the whole center of the building out if we had to to save the house from the barn, uh, got stuck on the front lawn. 
our engine, who was the first engine in, also had overflowed enough water during the fire to make a mud pie under it, and it was stuck. So I think he towed the ladder truck, just started down the driveway, called him back, no, come back and get our truck. So we had to come back and get it. And then uh, shortly thereafter, probably 40 minutes later, I looked down the driveway, and there's Nathan rolling fire hose for us, which was uh, uh, a great thing to see because our guys were really dragging and beat. They were beat bad. And uh, I wanted to make sure that we recognized Nathan White in, the, uh, in public works, too, because some of your guys also got involved in bringing us some water and supplies. But I wanted to make sure we also recognized Nathan White for his efforts at the fire. And uh, we're going to try to get him to join the department tonight uh, <laughs> because he did a great job rolling hose and loved the hose, the hose roller that we've got. It's actually an electric one. He said we should buy two of them, even though they're five grand each. <laughs> so we have a certificate, and I'd like to have Nate stand, step forward, and I'd like to wow. present this. And, uh, We really do appreciate the help, and that extra effort was way above and beyond. Mm -hmm. So, thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> and again, just to make sure we say thank you to everybody who helped, because without all those those companies being there, it wouldn't have been a success. Um, it does reach pretty far nowadays when we have a fire uh, to be able to control that and get enough staff on scene um, to make a difference. Anyways. So Thank the owners you. are extremely happy. That's the um, other thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So a little bit of an ex um, extending story to this, too, is um, there is no paving presentation by Nathan. Um, Sue, Sue Look called him. But he, just, he was just glaring at me a second ago. I know where we're going. So Sue, Sue Look calls him and says, hey, we have this on, and this is all on video, so you can't say nasty names at me right now. <laughs> so she says, um, I asked Nathan if he looked at the... Um, the agenda, and he goes, what do you mean? What do you mean I'm on, on for tonight? This is Friday at almost 4 o'clock. Yeah, and I said, I don't know. Joe wants, you know the selectmen, yeah. they want to know something about the paving is what they did. I said, just show up and give two minutes, whatever. But meanwhile, Sue, look, had called me beforehand and said, heads up, Nathan's going to call you. He doesn't want to come to the meeting. So he's going to call Teresa and get out of it. So I said, just show up. So I said to him then, I said, you know what? I said, I can have Don give a presentation. He goes, well, Don doesn't know my paving thing. <laughs> so I said, just, Nathan, just go. Two minutes, right? And he goes, all right. So then he says, okay, you know what? I'm going to put together a report or something. <laughs> he says, because I know Joe really likes the paving a lot, so I have to have something. So do you have the report for us tonight? I get a quick rundown if you want a quick oh rundown. It's pretty short. No, you can give it to us next month if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we just had to get you here. Well, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right, get in there. And uh, here, give a speech. Well, uh, uh, I, I, I thank you very much, Bruce. I, um, I do what I do because of the people of the town of Raymond. And uh, these are a great bunch of people to work with. They really are. It's don't do it for this, so no. really haven't got much to say other than that. But thank you. Uh, but I mean, you had, you had what, what Bruce, um, a beam come down through the back window when he was in it? Yeah, I hit it, yeah it was a two by four, four two by six. Mm -hmm. Just hit something just right and it come through, chased me right into the back of it. was kind of, kind of, kind of scary. It was on fire too. I haven't seen it move that fast <laughs> ever though. <laughs> There's not a lot of room in the cab of that tractor, but. I guess we'll, we'll have to not refurb the backhoe. We were talking about the code office. The last time we refurbed it, we had an incident down on the Cape Road, and you went yeah. down there and fought yep. a fire with it and burned yeah. the hydraulics off it. <laughs> yeah. This thing had just come from Chadwick. Bay Ross had a total refurb, pink job. Had it was it the first trip. How much money? Uh, nine grand on it. Just nine thousand oh. paint job, and then oh, the next day we're fighting a fire yeah. and it's on fire. But that's okay. Mm. I'm glad you weren't injured. Yeah. 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 All good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Seriously. Thank you, Thank you Nate. Thank you. <coughs> cool. That was good. He didn't even know. <laughs> Suspected something when Bruce got up. Well, the look you're giving me in your face is getting red behind your mask. I'm like, what? oh, no. All right. We're going to move on. Okay, so we have a presentation by the RSU 14 Board of Directors and Chris Howe tonight.
So I don't know which one of you guys want to. Actually, Mike's going to do the presentation part, and yeah. I'm here to answer questions, as are the other board members. Right, and as I said in the hall, the parking lot, I'm not sure this is a presentation. <laughs> it's more of just some information sharing. So I am Mike McClellan, and um, I live on Pismire Mountain and on Pismire Mountain Road in Raymond. And to my right is Kate Lavalier. And of note, she just became the vice chair. That's the title, right? Vice mm -hmm. chair of the uh, RSU board. Uh, to my left is Char Jewell. And then as you already heard, superintendent for RSU 14, Chris Howell is all the way on the end. So I wanna thank you. Um, this came up fairly recently. And uh, so I thank you guys for giving us an agenda time so quick. So a uh, pretty simple message to deliver is that Chris and some folks were working recently. As you may or may not know, uh, Wyndham is working and has gotten through the process with the state and gotten the funding to build a new middle school for Wyndham. Okay, and so I guess probably within the last month or even sooner than that, uh, there was a meeting going on in Augusta where they were tying up loose ends and the state uh, asked Chris basically, hey, does the town of Raymond want to jump in and participate in the new building that would be made in Wyndham as a middle school. So the state is simply asking if we want to participate in that. There's a, there's a time frame to it, a short time frame. And so I think just a couple of things, it's really clear that tonight we're here to deliver the message that the state asked and now we're giving it to the community. Um, and I guess we came to you guys to help us kind of come up with a process. The, the end result, I believe, is that the state would be looking for the RSU 14 school board to have a vote at some point in the near future. I think we're looking to try to get this done by November 1st or thereabouts. Um, so we come to you because obviously we wanna to talk to the town of Raymond, the survey, the parents and, the, and all the citizens of town uh, and try to get a sense of what the community thinks about that. Um, I wanna really reiterate, we're just delivering a message and I wanna really reiterate None of the three of us are coming here with a recommendation either way. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. Um, and I think the, and we can open up for discussion, I think the only, the only thing that's kind of a factoid, and, and again, take this with a grain of salt, is I, I, you guys appointed me about the time this happened. So I, I got into it about five minutes after this all occurred, I think. And the only thing everybody seems to agree on that I've talked with is that if the town of Raymond decides not to participate in this project, they should realize that they, they, there would be no thought of accepting a town of Raymond application in, a, in probably in our lifetimes right. for a middle school, okay? And, and I'm, I'm trying not to say that harshly no, no. as much as just it's a fact that if we choose not to do this, you know, we, then we choose not to do this. Um, and I'm not, I don't, again, don't say that to influence us either way. So, you know, in a sense, I guess, and then we can open up to you guys if you have questions. Um, we're, we're looking for your um, thoughts and help and support in creating a process where I guess we would do a straw poll or get some sense from the town of Raymond so that eventually we would go back and vote to represent the town. Does that make sense? Yeah, and if I can just jump in for yeah. a second. So the original application, as all of you know, because I think it was in process when the last cost sharing agreement was negotiated between the two towns. <coughs> Uh, the last application was done 2016, 2017 with the state, and it was done with a Wyndham only project, and the plan was to keep Jordan Small open. Um, and as all of us went through a withdrawal process through the last couple years, conversation has always been keep Jordan Small open, keep Wyndham Middle School open, um, go ahead and do that building. So I just also want to be very, very clear that this isn't coming out of an agenda to close, close Jordan Small Middle School. It is really the state and their process because they are funding this building for the new middle school for RSU 14 is, can you go back to Raymond one last time and just say, are you interested? Do you wanna be part of this? If so, we'll build a larger school for you to accommodate students. If you're not interested, that's great. And the RSU will continue on to continue to have two middle schools, uh, but with the understanding from the state <coughs> construction office that um, given enrollments and where we are with population, any adjustments, any sort of new construction on Jordan Small would be funded locally and would not be funded by the state and the state approved project. Um, they're looking right now to knock off schools with enrollment or other issues mm -hmm. that are going on. Um, so again, this is an opportunity and this is a choice. And um, if Raymond citizens say great to be part of it, then we plan moving forward for a larger school. If Raymond citizens say, you know what, we really like the idea of having a small middle school, then great, we'll move forward with that. 
is really an opportunity to provide and to receive some input. No, and thank you guys for that too. And I also know too, I guess I was, I was watching part of your meeting the other night, and you and I have talked too, and I know you and Rolf have talked also mm -hmm. too. And, and so with that, I know you're on a timeline too, and we were trying to get some kind of an answer, hopefully by the end of September. Um, but, so I know you're delivering the message. Yep, But clearly. You, well, right, no, I get that. And I'm not on either side, to be honest. I'm just saying that that message is a huge message yeah. for people is what it is. Yeah. Because there's a lot of information that we don't know. So one of the questions would be, and I think you brought this up and I, I'm trying to remember if I heard it right. So if we, cho if we choose not, not we, if Raymond chooses not to go with the middle school, Will, you said something about renovations would still be done at Jordan Small. Sure, so we have, um, I think everyone is familiar, and if you're not, you should be familiar. Uh, the RSU just did a $700,000 renovation to a Raymond Elementary School for a whole new front entrance that. and security upgrade, which is still in the midst, and who knew when that was planned that it would take forever to get doors in <laughs> <laughs> to finish that project. But it's a beautiful renovation and um, the R2 board is actually going to go to tour it tomorrow. But amazing security upgrades to that building. The exact same ones on a revolving renovation bond that was voted on by the citizens of Raymond two years ago now is scheduled for Jordan Small for next year. Uh, in addition, some classroom upgrades, moving the office to the front. Um, so that is all in process and that is actually funded. Uh, so that, if Raymond says, you know what, we would like to keep Jordan Small the way it is, that, that process continues to go forward. I think if Raymond says, you know what, we really like the idea of being part of a larger middle school and the opportunity of being in a school, I think we have to take a look at whether or not it would be worth putting that money into that building yep. um, the way that it currently is. So with that being said, um, you, you also just said too, um, so if we, keep, if we don't do it, Raymond would have to pay, it wouldn't be a split cost anymore? So if it was a renovation of Jordan Small, that's split by the RSU. Okay. Yeah, if it's actually a, like new, a new, footprint. new wing yep. of the building, then that's when we would take a look. And okay. I know Randy has some ideas for the building and to make that, that building, I don't want to say relevant, but to make sure that it meets educational programming needs for years to come. There are some things we probably want to look at down the road, such as expanding the stage, the cafeteria, uh, moving the music room to a little larger area because we do have strong music programs at Jordan Small and the space sometimes doesn't always. Um, so there's some things that we would definitely long term for that building want to do. But again, if it's um, we're looking at a new facility, then we would do something different with Jordan Small. So okay. um, I think the, the piece for the Wyndham Building Committee, which would <coughs> then, who knows what the building committee would be called, is that we have been set a targeted referendum date for June of 23. Okay. And so if you start to back up from that, um, looking at design phases, it does put us on a short timeline. But you know what? If um, it takes a little longer to make this decision, we may have to back up timelines. All right. Well, I just talked to Sue about possibly how to do a straw poll, not really a straw poll, but an informal one legally all day to try and get people to come in all day, but I'm going to open up to you guys for questions. Go ahead, Don. Will there be some analysis to, for the people to be able to judge what it would take to renovate that school? I'm presuming you'd need to do something major to that school to make it, you know, competitive educationally to this new middle school. I'm going to guess this new middle school is going to have, you know, a capital facility. It's going to be something that is going to be far surpassing what you have in Wyndham now what this is, I mean, this is an old school. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that you're going to have a, a state-of-the-art school in all respects. And so, I mean, to make this competitive, I, I don't see how that could be, how that could happen. Yeah, and just a, a piece, and then we've not had a chance to talk about this, but um, Wyndham Middle School, when, when we learned that Wyndham Middle School was actually going to be a project, uh, we met with a, one of the previous architects that had worked with the district, Lyndon Keck from PDT, and basically said, what are some things we can do up front to save us on the other end? And one was visioning. Uh, so when the middle school staff went through a visioning process, Jordan Small staff went through the same visioning process and basically came with the same outcomes. One being, what would you do for a brand new building? The other, what would you do in a renovation? But you're actually right, Don. It would be some significant costs for some renovations to that building. 
uh, to make sure that you had comparable programming and for me comparable opportunities regardless of what middle school you're attending. And then of course you get the issue of the census. I mean, do you have the students here to be able to, you know, to populate a school and provide the curricula there that you would have mm -hmm. in the other school? How do you do that? Yeah. That's what would be my concern. I mean, I'm not going to have any children or certainly any grandchildren. My son is not, not going to, he's not thinking about Maine. But I'm, but I'm thinking, and that's probably part of the problem, you know, but I'm, I'm thinking, are we going to have, what are the projections, you know, how, are we going to have students enough to populate that school to be able to have the kind of offerings that are going to be in Wyndham? And so I'm looking at the issue of, you know, having equal opportunity mm -hmm. for students here to what they can get at that Wyndham school. Yeah. And so is there going to be analysis about the capital facility and then the educational opportunity piece? Yes. That would be what I, if I were a parent, I'd want to look yes. at that. Mm -hmm. But then the other issue, though, you get back, the other thing that would be occurring to me, being an outlying parent geographically, would be if you were to decide to go to Wyndham, then you'd also want to look at the logistics of how you get the children there quickly enough. Because mm -hmm. I remember when my, when my son was going to the high school, that long, long bus ride was a real problem. And uh, so if you have young kids and you have that long bus ride, that, that's really difficult. So I'd want to see if you did go to Wyndham, how you would solve that transportation thing. So to me, it would be adding buses and or routes or something to get them there more quickly. Those are my just brief yep. thoughts. Yeah, and what, one of the interesting things, uh, I mean, in looking at the geography of the community, Wyndham and Raymond are really an hourglass, where you have larger Raymond, larger Wyndham, with a strip that runs between them. Um, you know, ideally, if it was a combine, you'd try to site somewhere in the strip, but that strip, there really isn't any slot to them. So now it's where are you moving your greatest volume of students. But um, one of the things that we have talked about in problem solving, and again, this is a new wrinkle for us, is that transportation. And of course, now we have the, the Mill Street um, changeover of students on buses. And so are you running expresses? And what does that do to bus time versus kids sitting? Mm -hmm. one, one last one, yeah. if, I, if I can. And the other thing is the die has been cast. I mean, the voters have spoken about the combined school. And so. You know, in this this one, I don't want to go too far, but I mean, they have spoken about the desire to want to be one one unit. I would say that. Mm -hmm. And so, but but that's a challenge, though, because as you say, the geography makes that hard. Yeah. Right. What exactly do you mean by the term participate? You mean financially, the town will share in the cost of the Wyndham Middle School? And what is the projected cost right now? So it's a, it is a state-funded project. Um, and at this point, it's a 100% state-funded project with wow. always going to be some. <laughs> <laughs> He's very skeptical about that state. Yeah. <laughs> always going to be some local additional that happens with any project. Wyndham High School is a great example. There's $7 million of local additional. And that's handled within the cost sharing formula. Raymond pays a portion of that local additional based on number of students. Where are we in a new funding formula right now? Say that again? Where are we on a new funding formula right now? New funding <coughs> formula per se for the state of Maine? Between Raymond and Wyndham, cost share. Same. So yeah. we're the same. It, it, the same. I, I, think, we're, I think you guys voted to read yeah, re the same. Just to keep going with the same cost sharing okay, formula. Okay, so Raymond's still picking up 36% of the yep. cost. All right. Could I, could I jump back just so people are watching on TV? So as an example of, of um, ex right now, if it's all funded, and we decided to say the gym or the auditorium or some piece of it, we wanted a bigger, what, what the state does is the state has the formulas and like they look the at populations and they, they basically allot you sizes and shapes. Yeah. And if we wanted to expand something like an auditorium, that, and that, but that's again, something we would all talk about. The, the gym at Jordan Small was an extra. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's when you maybe start paying some money. But that's something you make a choice about. Or, or the Performing Arts Center. Yeah, the, the, the back of Wyndham High, School, Wyndham High School's extra. auditorium. Right. The original state plan was just the front half, those back right. bleacher seats that was paid for at a local additional, as with additional cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, Joe, where I've actually had some questions to the state about is, uh, with Wyndham now receiving subsidy, that's why the, pro the program is 100% mm -hmm. state funded, and with Raymond being, um, you know, still a minimal receiver. What does that look like within state costs? Um, so I have a meeting tomorrow with the state. You know, that's information that we can supply. <coughs> uh, but as far as cost for a new building, um, it will be significantly, significantly discounted by state dollars that will be coming. 
Uh, and basically the state has said uh, they want to come here, they want to work with us, but they don't want to talk again for another 20 years. What is the current student population at Jordan Small? Jordan Small right now up. is 192, 93, somewhere in there. I know uh, RES is going up. We need to talk in bed. But. So Chris, I saw something on TV the other night. What is the subsidy for Raymond? Because it was very small numbers compared to your guys' as well. So it was like $4 yeah. or some, some odd. Five is the minimum. The subsidy? 5%. No, uh, I, no, I we're would, talking numbers. I would need to get that back to you off the top of my head. I just it was uh, you guys had I think like two million something like that, and I think we were down to like a single single yeah. digit is what it was mm -hmm. uh, that we get back from the state. It's very small compared it, to right. Raymond's a minimum receiver. Yeah. Uh, no question about it. Wyndham so subsidy overall is about sixteen million dollars. Yep. Um, total, but really the, the subsidy comes through special education costs and other things, but it's very, very I was small. surprised that the, the it's yeah. all, and it's all based on the state formula and yep. fiscal capacity and what they, the state views that you can afford. Mm -hmm. But Joe, going back to your original question, Wyndham's meets, met that fiscal capacity and that's why the project's being paid for. Uh, if I had to guess pro cost, we're probably looking at between a 60 and a $75 million facility mm -hmm. uh, by the time all is said and done. Uh, I can't tell you where the site is because part of the process is going through site selection. Uh, when the state opens their checkbook and works with you, um, they have quite a bit of say on yeah. things that they want you to consider for sites. Well, you also said too, they make you whole. So if they took a field from from Wyndham, they will replace and find a place for the field, Correct. which is mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So. Do you think if Raymond did decide to come in, that would have some influence on the site? Would that have some? Make it bigger. Um, I think what one of the one of the limiting factors is that, according to the state formula, we need about 35 acres. Well. And so, where is there 35 acres that's available? That is somewhere. First of all, in the hourglass. Right. I, I, I get that. I get oh, that. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. So it's probably it, um, there is some space available in Wyndham and there's also some space available on campus with possible relocation to other locations for athletic fields that are being. Um, and I think part of it also, and this obviously will come up in informational sessions, are um, depending upon <coughs> percentage of students, you know, what percentages are you moving across different locations. That, that sounds like a no, there's no land closer to Raymond. Not that I'm aware of. There's 25 acres behind Home Depot, and I think right now that's slated for several hundred housing units. Oh. <coughs> wow. Okay. Wow. So, I mean, I mean, years ago, when there was talk of the middle school, a new middle school, it was proposed somewhere near the Raymond Wyndham line, you know, so it'd be kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. That was 15 years ago? Yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah somewhere in there. That was the talk, but now a lot of that land has been developed. It's probably not available anymore. So. Is that buying like Genest and there's right. a, I think there's a large grove that's down there as well. Yep. Uh, ice cream dugout is at the top yep. of that grove. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it, at the end of the day, what we're trying to get here, you know, the, the goal here tonight is, is put together a game plan that says, Process, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, what you know would, would need to get scheduled is a public mm -hmm. public meeting because you know the straw poll either could be you know can be done as an adjunct to that or whatever. But you know from a timing standpoint, obviously facility we know where we can have it. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem getting a reservation. In <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's really a function of when when would you want to do that and what information would you be able to have at that meeting because. That's you know, that's, that's what that's when you're going to get the parents and all that are going to come into that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, something like that we would want to be able to advertise in a number of different forms sure. and things like that. Sure. But what they're going to want to know is, okay, what's going to be what's going to be presented at that? What opportunities are going to have for for inter you know for interaction and mm -hmm. things like that? So, I think that's that's kind of what needs to get nailed down quickly. Looking at looking at your timeline because something wants to be done fairly soon mm -hmm. in order to not disadvantage the timeline that you've got. Because mm -hmm. I know you and I talked about possibly having a, the vote by before the end of September. Yeah. Because you guys are talking we maybe four or five that. weeks. Yeah. 
you know, but, but to have the presentation for everybody to come and get out as much information so people have the idea. Of it. But you guys still don't have a lot of information, right? Well, we, we, we have, if it was going forward as a um, Wyndham Middle School project, mm -hmm. um, we have some site ideas. Okay. Uh, we have all the engineering studies to show that it is advantageous to actually close the current Wyndham Middle School and not keep it open uh, to build a new building. Uh, we, again, we have some site selection pieces, and um, Wyndham Middle School staff have done quite a bit of the visioning, which then lends itself into what's called the Ed Specs for the building, which then go to the architects. We have an architect selected, um, and we're ready to start looking into some concept pieces. And the um, state throws this at you. Boom. And, but that's yeah. okay. That's yeah. okay because yeah. I think it's a great question to ask. And um, again, if it's the direction people want to go in, then we'll change that direction. Um, the building can be scaled up mm -hmm. if necessary. Yeah. If you scale the building up, do you need to? Do you, if, you, <coughs> if you scale the building up, do you need to scale up also the footprint? In other words, you're looking at 35 acres. If if they, you know, if, we, if the town were to, you know, if the town people were to say yes, we want to get on board with that, is it now 40 acres you need, or is it still the 35? No, it's still within the 35 because of the, the size of the building. The other thing is that we're looking at in this project for greatest energy efficiency is going up, so okay. most likely it'd be a four-story building, mm -hmm. which then lessens the footprint of that building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go I don't know if it has to be in. Wyndham, but I want to point out the town of Raymond has a piece of property on the top of Patricia Avenue that abuts Wyndham. Oh, yeah. A large piece of property. Oh, yeah. Do you know how large it is, Alex? <laughs> yeah, it's a significant piece of property. <laughs> and Wyndham, I believe, has property up there as well. Yeah, you know, so part of that property. is up there, yeah. Where's just just Patricia? saying. Where's Patricia? Behind Coral and Glass. On Pipeline oh. Road. Yep. So there's property I there. there. <laughs> it's high property and it's. Uh, Beautiful property. Hmm. Oh my God, with that road. Just space. saying. Yep. Yeah, no. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, there is Wyndham up there, right? Pardon me? There is Wyndham neighborhoods up there. Wyndham, major Wyndham growth area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Yep. And actually, I think Pete Heinzer lives right back around. And they're talking about, the other thing they're talking about doing, I, I think Barry contacted me recently. This is something that Tony and I talked about for years. I've talked to Tom Bartell about it. They, they for years have talked about a window bypass and coming down to Route 85 through there. So just saying mm -hmm. that, that that's another thing. So there may be a connector. They they, they dream of a connector road. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, we, I, I think it's a great idea too. And I've been mm -hmm. talking for 20 years with various Wyndham officials about that. But the idea of a, I won't call it a bypass, but a secret but, bypass. But, yeah, right. but, a, but, a, but a window. I know. The spur. Because I, I know. Connector. I think they call yeah. it. Yeah. And there's a connector that's in process or planning for, I think it's running Home Depot to 115. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. Wyndham, I think they call it the Wyndham connector. And so the, yep. yeah. So it's just, just saying it could be on a major connector route at some point. And that, we have a piece of land there and I think Wyndham may as well. Just something to look at. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think okay. what we need to do then is plan, plan out. Like, is yeah. there, is three weeks out too too short, too long? So I'm thinking if we did like a three week, and then plan a. Um I, I don't think it's going to be hard for us to prepare. I mean, the facts are the what we know is the facts. Right. So I think we're pretty ready to go. I think the answer is going to be what you're going to do to join small school. The questions. You That's going to be the oh. question from parents and Raymond, because as many parents who, during the whole withdrawal process, mm -hmm. said. Oh, they're never going to close through a small school. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> but some of us said it may happen. Mm -hmm. so, you know, to, to me, I mean, if I were a parent, I'd want to see some sort of equivalency, and I, I just don't know how you right. how you do that. Right. This At least a, not in the short term. You know, it's, I, I don't know. It's a pretty pretty major opportunity. Chris, I think you know, but I think the other thing you'd have to do, you know. You always get those questions there that no one thought you were going to get. Right. And yeah. so, in your timeline, you've almost got to build in time to say, okay, you know, there's questions that are going to come up in there that we can't answer, so we need time to be able to mm -hmm. react to those, mm -hmm. get those answers out there before you, before you mm -hmm. do the final straw. Uh, and I agree. And I think what what the my envision the evening to be like is a more <coughs> polished presentation, um, and then chance to kind of walk through a little bit of history, give people as much information, then <coughs> plenty of opportunity to ask questions in mm -hmm. the forum. 
uh, and for them to have an understanding. And then I think, Teresa, what you and I talked about is trying to do a follow-up yep. as well. And Ralph, that'd be a great time to then go back to some of those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what the RSU 14 board is looking for is um, some sort of decision by whether it be done by straw poll or by vote or by something else, and that they would then vote to accept that decision and let the citizens of Raymond decide um, do they want to be part or not be part? How, how late did the board say? Because I know there is a timeline at some point. I, I know you guys got could, last minute. If we could shoot for the 1st of November. Okay. So we've got, yeah. And, and did I hear I you talked about time. earlier about doing a, a vote, uh, actually having an election day well, would be. I told her, I told her too, I said, is there a way we can do this legally to have a straw poll? And she says, can we do it before November 2nd? And I said, we're going to need to do it before November 2nd because we're going to yeah. need yeah. it. Yeah. So, so you just wanted to say something too. Yeah, it's that um, it's a choice between doing a straw poll, which I think has some possible ramifications of people saying, I didn't know, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. Um, and perceptions being negative that way, possibly, or having a vote. Right. At this point, if you were to go for a vote, I would need to come in tomorrow and get a ballot going. Otherwise, we'd be doing a hand count after election, which Correct. is still possible. But um, but even with a hand count, we'd need to know sooner than later and get the publicity out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Because um, it's already 45 days, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, because because I'm thinking in my head, gone. If we do it all day, it just gives people all day to say, okay, you you can go, you can go. It gets more people out, it gets word out to people more instead of you know like the hour, two hours in the afternoon. Coming to a meeting, I think we're only going to maybe get like I don't know, maybe fifty to hundred people at the most that on that. Yeah. So all right, so today's the fourteenth. Can, can I ask a procedural question? Is it? Do you have to have a, a vote by the citizens, or is it a Board of Selectmen purview? Um, I have to look at the education law to find out if it's required to have a vote at the time right. or not. That I don't yeah. know. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure. It's well, the state and the state's system. looking for us to vote eventually. Yeah. The school board, right, will eventually be the vote. So you're saying have the select select board say yes or no? Yeah. Take a vote out. Yeah, have yes or no. Have a public hearing. Have people come out to a public hearing, voice their opinion, and then a couple of weeks later have a selectman meet and take a vote. You know, I wondered about that, and I wondered. I think Kate and I were talking about also maybe opening up some an email, some some other where people can't be at that meeting, which always happens. That there'd be other ways they could give feedback. Whatever you know, if it's. Emailing Don's office. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Put your email. <laughs> like Survey. That. I, you know, I have, I have to say, I, mean, I never thought of it that way. Because I, because I guess what I'm looking at is when, when people voted to stay with the RSU, which is fine, they also made a statement. So, to, so, to stay with it would be to, yeah. to do the, the yeah. window middle school, and then see what happens with Jordan Small School after that. I mean, yeah. The, the, before the selectmen set the, the mill rate and the spending and... But that's such you know, a big decision, but on the other oh hand... Oh my God, we don't want to make a big decision. <laughs> so, hey, so that sounds I, like some more like Joe. Yeah, can I, Chris and I were talking earlier, and Smart. Joe, you, you mentioned the building. And, and, and it, the policy of the RSU is if we stop using that building, then it reverts back to Raymond. Mm -hmm. Is that... That was that's pretty clear. That was part of the original consolidation. Yeah. So that's I mean so that then then you can have your discussions about you know moving town office or whatever you want to talk about. But wow, Joe just Joe, Joe you just threw but in I, a whole Mike, different thing which makes sense though. But I mean you know if you if, if, if you if you yeah. take it if you take it back to, to one level I mean you know what's happening here is you know you, you're trying to get the input which is which mm -hmm. is which is a great thing because in point of fact because <clears throat> the vote was made that you know it's the RSU. The RSU board actually has the authority to make the decision anyway. Yeah. yeah. And what the, what's being done now is saying, you know, we want to take that back and say, yeah, we want, you know, we want we want your input. So the question is, how do we get how do we get that input? And that's 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 where we're getting back to is okay, how do we get that input? You know, at the end of the day, whether it's a straw poll or whatever, you're going to get you're going to get the feelings from those meetings anyway. Yes. So it's going to 
it's going to be driven. It's going to be driven from that, and then as a function of, you know, what official thing do you want that comes to you that says here's here's the here's here's what the feelings of the town people are, and here's and we're either we're either, we're either in or out. Mm -hmm. So can I ask? This is going to sound kind of weird, but um, so say say we do it. Say say Raymond says yes. What if the school board votes no? They can do that. Or vice versa. Right. right. You could say no, and we could vote oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> honestly, yeah. <laughs> I, but but, oh I, but God, I, I tell crazy. you, the little this bit we talked, all three of us agreed. We, we're not we we're not playing our cards at all. No. We, we're coming here to deliver a message. Yeah. No, and I'm not yeah. playing. I'm just trying to get. I, I'm, I'm I literally like on this fence. If I can speak for this, yeah. and actually, after living through withdrawal with all of you as well, <laughs> um, I think the board recognizes that it wants to respect the wishes of the people of Raymond with this, and if so, if the general consensus that comes out of this is, you know what, let's be part of a new Wyndham Middle School, then they'll accept that. If the general consensus is, you know what, we're happy the way it is, then we'll continue to work on programming and things that we need to do in order to make that happen. So, um, okay, yeah. The only, the only way to get a general consensus, to me, that, that terminology kind of bothers me. The only way you get a general consensus is to have a, a vote, you know, a democratic you know, outcome, a vote. That's a general consensus in my mind. You know, I think, and I, if I can speak, can I speak? Yeah. As a, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't try never to do this, but you know, I think what should govern it, this is if there's some way to determine. That's why I, I look at this from a kind of a scientific method or a you know objective um, method. What is best from an educational standpoint? You know, the data. Let's look at the data and can we do this up here? The equivalency, the data, and so. The, so I, I don't know how, how can yeah. you do that how can you do hmm. that fast? How can you develop all of that information that you would need to judge what is it going to take to make this equivalent to that, if that's even possible, and then on a sustainable basis moving forward. If I were going to be, you know, moving here with young children and, and or people in the future, I mean, I think that you know, I'd want to be certain that that facility in five years, ten years 20 years, a lifetime, is going to be something that I'd want my children to go to. You know what I mean? That's a big, that's a huge decision. But I think also the board recognizes that when, I you, get look, it. when you look at data, that data is not in the vacuum. That data is within a history. Sure. Right, right. RCU. Right, but I mean, a lifetime is a long time, and so I think this is a, this is a monumental decision to have to be making really, really fast. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, all right, so we're back to what, what if we plan, say, two weeks from now to have like a public forum, public hearing? I was going to say like October 5th or 6th, you hold a public hearing in Raymond, and the selectman meeting is on the 12th, and we take a vote yeah, at yeah, that time. Is that yeah. enough time, though, to do the two meetings like Ralph had suggested? Yeah. To get back with well, the answers. Right, that's what I'm thinking. To have two. Like, Why would you need two meetings? Well, because they may not have questions, or maybe pe some people that miss the meetings, you know what I mean, that might want to come out once they hear more information. So, I mean, and, and I hate, this is, I hate bringing up the withdrawal, but we put the withdrawal meetings out there just so people could make different meetings, and that's what I'm referring to here. So if we have the 28th, for one meeting, and then we can also have the fifth for another meeting for any kind of questions or that type of thing, just informational wise. I don't think we have any issue, I, I assume. No, and I, I would agree it. with that, just people are, are busier. Exactly. Now. Yeah. You know, with soccers Soccer and, and kids. And yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just thinking, so it's two different meetings that. And, and if we're acknowledging that, it's going to be hard to get people yeah. any yep. options are good. Are you guys free the 28th and the 5th? No. What aren't you available on? The 28th. I gotta go deal with my mother. But but you can do the fifth, right? I so you can just make one? Okay. Yeah. Rolf, what about you? Yeah, I can do either, either, or both. Okay, so Joe, no. If it was, one thing I would consider is not doing them on the same night. Okay. No, I'm fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Two different that makes nights. Sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Because right, so some people may work every Tuesday night, mm -hmm. you know. Good so. Point. All right, so 10, 10 5, we can do that one. Then what about that week of the 28th? It's a short week. Um, for just, it becomes October. So Monday's the 27th, Wednesday's the 29th, Thursday's the, tw uh, the 30th. Well, you got the, yeah, so the 28th is 
Net is a is a Tuesday night. If then if you yeah. went October sixth, which is a Wednesday night. That's a sure. that's, that's, a, that's a board meeting. Oh, that's a board meeting. Yeah. Sure. Ah. <laughs> 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 what about the seventh then, like a Thursday? Mm. So it'd be ten five and ten seven that week. Sure. The zoning board ten five and ten seven. We're still looking at the twenty. What about the okay. fourth? Well, Monday the fourth. So like October fourth and October fifth. Yeah. Two days in a row. Could I mean? <laughs> I'm just trying I can to give that second night for you for parents that they can't, they can't make it. Chris, what about you? I can do both the fourth and the fifth. I okay. can be there both days. Mm -hmm. Six is a board meeting. Seventh is a construction. <laughs> <laughs> What are you trying to do to his evening? I know, exactly. I'm on all his meetings, too. Oh, you too, then. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, do you guys want to do that? The fourth and the fifth? Fourth and fifth is good. Works for me. Give one night. We can't do it. Um, you're not going to have all the information on the fifth for the second night, but you know what? I, I think as you go through this process, you're yeah. not going to have, yeah. You yeah. can do it. 6.30, 7. 6.30. Where? Here in Small Gym? Sure. Yeah. Here in Foster. Assuming that's open, we're gonna. May I just ask how the work will yes. get out? Yes, that's that's what I was okay, gonna do. Thank no, you. I was We're just gonna do that next. Each minds. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we have um, the Roadrunner, which comes out, I think, at the end of the month, right? Mm. Right, Sue? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I believe it comes out this week, Friday. Yeah, well, we can put it out through our you know channels. Sure, Thursday. We'll have to get right off yeah, I think she, no. She she and has to put that in we can put it today. On the I think. And we'll put so it on list right? Yeah. No, it's yeah. Tuesday. So she between the town and the Wednesday. school, we should have sufficient done. means to get this publicized. Yeah. And the electronic signage boards. Yeah. So we'll get right on that, right? Well, well Sue's on vacation, so I guess. I'll let, I'll let Kayla know on the way home. Right. We'll let Kayla know. Yeah. Is there a way, and I don't know if it's alright to do it, is there a way that we can send it through like the students with the parents? Yep. We've already, we can put it on the cert. And okay. Blackboard. Okay. That's how we communicate mm -hmm. now. Just, just so everybody's getting accurate information. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 Um, That's good. Gosh, we can hit. We're talking six thirty. You said right. Yeah. I'm just trying. I'm just. Don't, trying I'm going to come in the morning for a couple of hours. Okay. So, so well, maybe yeah. the other thing we could do because it's so important. I mean, if you, I don't know if you want to do this, Chris. I guess it'd probably be better for you than me, but. We could also probably contact the, the Eagle, and I, I bet they'd do a story about uh, it. Lorraine. So, yeah. Lorraine. Yeah. There you Lorraine. go, Lorraine. Yeah. Lorraine. Yeah. Lorraine. Lorraine. By the way, so Lorraine blows ankle we'll to a story. Yep. Mm -hmm. she, she is a great hire for you. Huh? She works for the school position, now. She's a communicator right. between the yeah. schools. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, Lorraine. Yep. Lorraine can get that done. Okay. So we can put it on the face there. You can put it. All right, yeah. Yeah. Cool. We snatched her. All right. Um, um, Thank you guys. You know what? I'm wondering too if we can tap into the library um, email yeah, too I'm and sure see we what can. we can do to get do things that. out that way. Yep. All right. We'll try every every avenue we can to get it. So ten four and ten five. So can Six. I ask? Because we're actually we have our meeting tomorrow night. So the process sounds like we're going to have two meetings mm -hmm. to the public, and then you guys are going to vote. We may, we may take a straw poll or ask people to raise hands or something, but ultimately <coughs> you guys are going to vote and then hand that to us, and then That's we'll do right. what we do. Well, I, I think, too, is I'm going to give people a chance to say, are you for it, against it, and why, just to kind of see what their, sure. their pros and cons are sure. of it. And that kind of tells us, yeah. All right. Um, Madam Chair, should I make sure there isn't any statutory requirement, or I don't think there is for a vote, but just to be sure, or do you think we're all set? You could block, um, but I don't think there's any requirement at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's understand, our understanding, right? It's right. Not the, the really, the statutory would, would fall under the mm -hmm. RSU board. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Wouldn't be us, I don't think. Well, good. All right. Good work, guys. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Seriously, thank you for coming really up fun. and talking. And we'll see you guys on the 4th and the 5th. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your time, guys. Kate. Come early to those meetings, you'll get a good chair. I know. Yeah. I gotta remember that for tomorrow night. That's the one that's broken. No, Charlotte. Oh, is it here? Is it here tomorrow night? Yeah. Put your name yeah. on the back. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Thank you. All right, bye, bye guys. Thank you. Good night. All right. There you go, that's just it. All right, next, consideration of the finance director appointment. All right, we have a new finance director, Charisse Keach. And 
uh, so she started on September 9th. I think you all met her before the meeting. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Yes. To the, to the Thank you for having me. All right. My name is Sharice Keach. I'm a resident of Sebago, so I am an outsider. Uh, as Dawn had mentioned, I started on Thursday and had a full day of basically a meet and greet of a lot of people. And um, Friday was um, working with someone that we had contracted some assistance in getting our books in order. So uh, I. Like I said, live in Sebago. I've been there since the fall of 2015. Uh, prior to coming to Raymond, I was the finance officer for the town of Bridgeton for almost six years. And prior to Bridgeton, I was the uh, town treasurer for the town of Buxton for four years. And prior to that, I worked for the county of Franklin, Franklin County up in Farmington, Maine, which is my hometown. Um, for for three years um, so I've been in southern Maine since 2011 and I like being here and uh, Rolf was on the interview committee and thank you for choosing me as your candidate finalist and uh, I'm looking forward to digging in and making some recommendations and suggestions and working I've already been working very closely with a lot of the departments and uh, everybody's been really quite helpful and makes the day enjoyable good good so I don't know if you, any of you have questions for me I just told her communication is good well, we're very she'll happy get a lot of that <laughs> we're very happy to have you and yeah so uh, we're actually excited to have you here and thankful and uh, so we're going to keep you very busy, I'm sure. Yes, you are. <laughs> and we'll save all of our questions we have for when we need answers for diff something different. We're looking for, <laughs> for selectman uh, yes. information. We need a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint Charisse. I second that. All in favor? Welcome. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. So may I uh, take an opportunity? <coughs> I, I really didn't want to jump in with the um, RSQ 14 Board of Selectmen. Uh, not Board of Selectmen. Um, board of Directors here and the Superintendent, but I, I did want to just offer um, some comments in regards to this um, public hearing process and whatnot. I didn't know if they developed any FAQs or, you know, as it would pertain to Raymond citizens. I think that would be helpful, as well as, you know, some informational pieces. Um, you know, what's it going to cost? That sort of thing. On like the website? Or anything to get out to the public so they you know can take it take an opportunity to review it I mean, oh you mean this what we just yes okay yeah no that's what we're, that's what we're still processing yeah nope i mean chris must have colleagues in the superintendent um world so to speak that have gone through this type of process before and should be able to you know get some insight perhaps from them when they do this sort of thing um, but i think that would be helpful for the public to have an faq you know, some type of informational piece hey, right. available. Or somewhere them. somewhere where people can actually post things so we they can't make it so we can read it. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a suggestion. No, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to do your thing while you're up there too? The tax? Do I do I have a thing? A thing. Or do you want to wait for that's all part of that's part okay. of the I know go sit down, sorry. Setting the mill rate. Yeah. That's part of the mill rate <laughs> thing. That's part of the mill rate discussion. I figured you since she was already doing right. No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Consideration of road name change from Nancy's Way to Treehouse Way. Good evening, everyone. I am um, Nicole Keogh, and I currently live um, off of Sloan's Cove Road on Nancy's Way, and I would like to propose to change the name of my road to Treehouse Way. Um, my husband and I live in a log home on Nancy's Way currently. It is the only home. It's actually our driveway. It's about uh, 764 feet long, and it does run through a right of way. Um, about 175 feet of that is owned by Matt and Brooke Elder. Um, and I have gotten an email from them asking if we can change the name, even though their driveway is directly off of Sloan's Cove, and they would never put a driveway or um, um, any 
way onto their property through Nancy's way. So they they gave their uh, approval um, to to do so. Um, and I've also covered this with Kayla Gonzalez, uh, the E nine one one. That's what I was just going to ask. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, she ran it through um, some algorithms with the Treehouse Way name, and it's not at all close. I, I believe the closest, in fact, was White House Farm Road. Okay. White House Farm, that's what we were talking about earlier with the fire. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Um, do you have any questions for me? Nope. Kayla, Kayla's already got one ahead to end. Confirmed it. So we just need a motion. Move to rename Nancy's Way to Treehouse Way. Just a question: Was the road named after you? No, it wasn't, and that's part. Of, that's also another reason we, we moved there in 2018. Huh? Nancy was uh, she owned the land uh, before a uh, builder came in and decided that he was going to subdivide a, a larger portion of Nancy's uh, property. And uh, he ended up only building the one home. And uh, that, was, that was it. Um, there is some you know, cons to, to having the Nancy's Way. It's not um, recognized by the USPS with the apostrophe S you know, for possession. So. Um, it was a bit complicated at first, and I had to make sure that all friends and family and credit cards and utilities knew that, it, you know, it is Nancy's way minus the apostrophe. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> After that, expect yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Excellent. All right, good. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank everybody. you. All right. Kurt LaBelle, consideration of setting mill rate for FY2122. Good evening, everybody. Uh, in your uh, packets, uh, you should see a uh, sheet with some rate options for this year. Um, as uh, the last uh, couple of years, uh, the town voters at town meeting have authorized the selectmen to utilize up to $300,000 in fund balance uh, to reduce the mill rate uh, above and beyond the other revenue which is classified uh, in, the, in the town meeting warrant. Uh, so it's kind of a dual calculation. Uh, the selectmen will uh, kind of decide how much fund balance, if any, they want to use while keeping a, another eye on the overlay that results from the tax rate selected. So. I've come up with you know three options. You can you can pick one of those, or you can <coughs> pick one of your own. Uh, I'll help you uh, if you decide you want to use a different number for uh, fund balance, or or perhaps a different rate. Uh, I can uh, give you some on-the-fly calculations as to what that would do uh, to the overlay. And if you have any general questions about uh, <coughs> taxation, feel free to ask those as well. <coughs> so, Kurt, after talking to Sharice, just for a few minutes, she was saying, too, that it's better to have more of an overlay. Not so much. <coughs> you have to go, yeah, sorry. No. Fund balance she's talking about, not overlay. Yes, yeah, so not so much um, the overlay piece of it. Um, that's I'm generally scissors, used yeah. for your abatements. And I had a discussion with Kurt, not knowing the history of abatements approved here. Um, the un the uh, unassigned fund balance. Okay. Nope. I <coughs> mix up that. All right. But doesn't the Government Accounting Standi Standards Board say 15 to 18%? That was the last time I, I read it. Uh, I don't know which standard board you're referring to. There's an, a government accounting standards board. Right. And there's that a number. talks about, yeah, there's a number in there, and it's mm -hmm. about 15 to 18 percent. Don't know how long ago that was established. It's still, it's still a standard. You may want to look it up. But so I mean, you know, that's your, that, I think that falls in line with your existing policy right, right. of 15 percent. Right. Correct. Uh, we did try to do some quick investigation to see where the town was at currently. Uh, with the turnover that we've had, all 
The only right. number we could really hang our hat on was the audited figures from FY20, and I, I think you would come out around $1.8 million for uh, undesignated fund balance uh, from that point. <clears throat> the 15% of the last commitment is going to be a target value of somewhere between 2.1 and $2.2 million. So I don't know if we've made gains or lost yeah, since I'm, FY20. So I'm trying to figure out why it went down so low. I wasn't on the board, but we, from what I remember previously when I was on the board, it was always around the 2.2 number. Right. For the, that was your general yeah. revolving number. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I will say, if my recollection is, you know, the town has utilized fund balance the last several years for tax reduction. Well, because um, there was a lot of it there. Yeah. 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 So. But I mean, you know, if we, if we look at a couple of the key, indi key markers, one is our <clears throat> property tax payment is, you know, up at the 95 to 98% rate. As far as as far as on time payments or you know, collection collection, yeah, our it was kind of surprising, but our excise you know, our uh, vehicle tax and, and registrations and whatnot all, all came in at or at or above projections. So, in from a from a historical standpoint, the town has never had to go out on a tan. So, you know. The 15 percent, you know, getting getting to that <clears throat> getting to that figure seems to be a reasonable reasonable number based on our historical. You know, I think we'll have to look at it a little bit when we go through reval and see where where things shake out there because that's when we may end up with some tax issues. We also may end up with some abatement issues, but the abatement issues are more going to be taken care of in the overlay than in in the in the Undesign undesignated areas, but I think yeah. we we did spend down some on the undesignated on some of the, on some capital things and things like that. But, but, it, but I think we're getting to the point now where we want to be a little bit more. You know, well, yeah. I, I, I suspect over the balance. next uh, year, Sharice uh, will be uh, will have a pretty good idea. It's you know when she gets more comfortable where we are at, whereas you know we're yeah. kind of a little bit in the dark. At the Mm -hmm. We're worried. How much did we use of the overlay for abatements? We would have. We only issued the last few years, a few thousand dollars right. here or there. Yeah. Um, I will say the only thing that's really on my radar is a couple of, you know, uh, I have a couple of commercial properties on that might may or may not be on my radar. But uh, you know, we have to just take it as it comes. Yeah. <coughs> so, Mr. Bruno, if I may uh, yep. address your concern over Gatsby, yep. um, usually they have a number assigned to them in talking about the UFB. My experience in dealing with auditing firms is that they recommend having three to four months in the unassigned fund balance to pay payroll, yep. the school appropriation. You know, we don't have tax payments coming in probably till mid October, perhaps, if bills go out, you know, soon. Um, so that w that's why I would um, suggest perhaps revisiting that policy and increasing that. And you're also looking at that target balance being based on the prior year commitment, which I don't know as I would even put that in there because it's a little um, obscure because, you know, budgets do go up. The municipal budgets have to go up. The school appropriation is going to go up, county. Um, so it's a little obscured in my opinion, but that's just my suggestion. Well, I can tell you from my experience, accountants always want you to have too much money set aside, <laughs> and Raymond taxpayers want you to have as minimal amount of money set aside as you can, uh -huh. because we don't want to just hoard money from the taxpayers. Right. No, I understand. So you got to find the balance in the middle somewhere, uh -huh. and if the standard is 15, I don't know why we would go to 25. That's just me. I happen to be fairly conservative financially. Understand? Oh, 25? I don't see how you could ever get to 20 percent. Unless you raise the taxes. Oh, yeah, because we're, you know, we, we right. may, the only concern that we have is that we might be more like at 10 percent. 
right now. Instead of, we may not be making our 15. Well, so we don't have to be watchful, I think, over the next year, coming into next year's tax cycle. A good idea. I mean, I mean, is stepping mm -hmm. in yeah. while we're trying to set the mill rate, yes. and she's just, yep. you've been there how long? Four days now? That's and you don't have, three. okay, and you don't know any of this stuff yet? What is taking you so long? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Other so. than I did review your policy, and right. I did, yep. you know, look up what the aside fund balance right. was as of the last audit, because that's what the policy is based on. By the way, I was kidding, just so you know. No, uh, no. You've got to give it back to Joe. <laughs> she, she asked me if she could share her concern. I told her she I could. I told she could, so, too. So yeah. that's fine. And um, But I also pointed out that, you know, we do have a you know, AAA bond rating. So, you know, we're doing something right. And um, so take it under advisement. I think we can move on and set a mill rate, maybe? Yeah. Over to you. Just not, we're not looking at making changes tonight. I think she was just wanting to share her no. yeah. opinion of this, yeah. I guess. All right, what are you guys thinking? What's the tax impact on the, if we go to 1410, what's the tax impact on the $300,000 house? I'm mm. assuming it's 15 cents a thousand. Is that yep. right? Yep. So yep. you're talking $15 a hundred thousand? Is that my math correct? Yeah, sounds right. Plus a little bit more for the homestead cut. Yeah. You know, but yeah, you're somewhere in that neighborhood. So it'll be forty-five dollars, and that includes the school. And the and yeah. from what I'm seeing on the school, it's flat. All right. The it school up. is up a little bit. It went up a little. Uh, it, it, what happened? The county went down. The state right. the school went yeah. up. Okay. Uh, yeah, school was up a little. Uh, the, the municipal was up. We did. Uh, we do have a pretty good increase in rep sharing mm -hmm. coming our ways. That's right. going to help offset um, some of the municipal increase. Um, Which will probably not increase. be there next year. Well, <laughs> who knows? But well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would expect next year the county is going to go up. The, the only reason the county didn't. The only reason the county yeah, got all that federal money is yeah. because it, it just because other towns grew faster than we did. But mm -hmm. with some of the growth that we've got. That's mm. going to catch up to us. Right. So I think you're going to see the county jump back up next year. Yeah, just from an apportionment standpoint, yeah. regardless of what happens yeah. with their budget. Yeah, because the county budget did not go down. It's just our mm -hmm. our share went down because <coughs> our property values didn't increase as much as some of the other towns. Yeah. But that's going to level itself, yeah. and we'll we should see that jump back up next year. Yeah, because you have a lag period, you know, and yeah. the, the the effects of Corona. You know, we're, we're going to start to see those in our subsidy, you know, in, in our apportionments and in mm -hmm. our uh, ratios here next year. I'll make a motion to set the mill rate at 1410. I will second that. Are you comfortable with that, Kurt? Yep. I mean, that's if you, always, as long as you stress, guys are. We always stress you out. So. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a tough question for him. I know. Because if he had his way, he'd probably want to be, oh, yeah, you know, let's be on the safe side and go 1440. Uh, there, you know what? The, I, the, only, the real issue is, uh, is if the board is comfortable applying that amount of fund balance, there's not, no reason not to go 1410. Uh, you know, the way I look at it is I'll take my chances. Any input? No, I mean, you know, between the 1410 and 1420, I mean, the, the only difference is how much we're, we're using of the fund balance. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to think, we did, you know, uh, we were, we had that, we had that lip at the end of the last year on the, on repowering, repowering the boats, but we took, because we hadn't used the, seven, we hadn't used the, our, des, contingency. our contingency, we were all right. You know, that would be the only thing is whether, you know, that was getting used for the low. Uh, but we still have, we still have that contingency that we tried to hold for that, for those, so it wouldn't, I don't feel bad about going, you know, using the 1410 because I think that we've got to see what, what's going to come up next year on county and things like that. All right. Any more discussion? All in favor? All right. Working 10. <coughs> I'll be uh, probably coming back to see you guys early winter to talk, uh, give you some reval timeline, you know, give you some data as to where we're at. <coughs> 
some timelines and we can make some decisions at that point the board can about you know going forward or not going forward depending on what, you know where we're at at that time but we're kind of on the horizon of it so i'll yeah. see you in a few months sounds good thank thanks, you thanks kurt, kurt. <coughs> all right alex you're up for the next <coughs> three shakerwood progress update please all right Good evening, Alex, code officer for the town. Um, so Kathy and I went out to Shaker Woods two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, uh, and met with Jared. Uh, it had been a little while since we had gone out, um, so we wanted to go get a, a good look at the property. Um, our goal was to spend more time on the outside. We've done a lot of inspections of the uh, interior of the house, so this time we really wanted to see where he was at since we're quickly approaching the October 1st deadline that you guys had set in the order. Uh, so we went, met with Jared. We did end up going inside um, as well, but from what we saw on the outside, um, it's clear that he got the message. Um, he, he's cleaned up um, essentially the areas that we uh, prioritized, so that's immediately around the house. Um, you know, the, the items that we had really said, you know, you need to make sure that this stuff is moved away from the house, uh, propane tanks, uh, you know, stuff like that, that the fire department had, you know, serious concerns about. All of that stuff's been moved, um, and he's, he's really, um, you know, gotten quite a bit of work done. Um, there's no way, um, not even a 1% chance that he'll have the uh, outside cleaned up by October 1st. It just will never happen. Um, so at this point, um, I th and Kathy can speak for herself if she'd like, but we've, we've talked quite a bit about this and we both think that um, he's definitely shown us that he's taking this seriously. Um, he's continued to make his payments uh, for the back taxes. I believe he's actually set it up now to automatically withdraw from his bank, I believe. Um, so he's, he's definitely taking this seriously. Um, at this point, it doesn't look like the, a lot more will be out before snow flies. I mean, we've got a little bit longer, but um, you know, this definitely won't be cleaned up before winter. So I think at this point, um, we're comfortable continuing to check in with him uh, monthly or every other month to kind of watch the progress and you know, allow him to continue to clean this up through the winter um, and possibly reassess with you guys in the spring uh, to see what we think you know the priority should be for you know the spring and summer season for him to continue picking up but ultimately that decision is up to you guys um, so that's kind of where we're at right now how's this road look going in I mean you can get in there uh, it was there are some pretty good size um, ponds uh, it was pretty wet I mean it's a wet lot so the way the road is is you know the, the um, topography of the road there's gigantic holes uh, you know kind of goes up and comes back down up and back down and the water pools in the middle of them um, it's not great could the fire department get in there yeah um, I think the the uh, gray rescue department has gone in a couple of times this year I know of at least once um, I don't know if we know if they went in with an ambulance or if they went in with a truck or how they did that, but um, we do know that they went in for a call. A truck went to the dual bus. Yeah. Does he live by himself up there now? His, his parents mother, still live there? His mother is still alive. Okay. Time. And there is a mobile home uh, also on the lot that has at least one other person living in it. There may be two people living in that now. But um, the RV that was way down in the back that started all of this. Uh, has been, um, I wouldn't say demolished because it's still there. Uh, however, it's definitely not livable. It's a pile of rubble at this point. So that situation is resolved. Um, no one's living in that camper anymore. Um, but now it is unfortunately part of the junkyard. Is that where his uncle used to live? Is that who? His uncle, Jared's uncle. No, he's down in the front. So if you guys are feeling that he has done s some significant improvements and that he is safe in the house, why don't we set up, how do you guys feel about setting up like a phase two? You know what I mean? Like he's, he's made the phase one. 
done, and now we'll start working on phase two of it. Kathy? Kathy. Um, My concern. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Goslin, health officer. My concern on the house, which we've addressed with Jared, is he still has some unsafe electrical stuff that needs to be done. Oh. That needs to be a top priority. Like um, Alex was saying, he did a really good job of cleaning up. And one of the reasons he's cleaning up is because he's finding he's getting money back. Mm. And he admitted that. And he said, I'm not as pissed off at the town as I was before, you know. So, um, but he does have some electrical issues in the house that really need to be taken care of. I think other than that, that's really the biggest health and safety issue we have for inside the house. So what's There's some smaller that? things. So what's the stalling for the electrical issues to be fixed? Finding an electrician to do it. He had a buddy that was going to come do it who was an electrician, and I think it's just been, he's done some of the electrical, but there's still more left to do. Yeah. Well, in my, in my opinion, the, yeah, the electrical is more important than, yeah. than the cleanup. No, I, yeah. Well, I didn't know, yeah. yeah as, long as, as long as you get, as long as from, from a, a safety standpoint, you can get a vehicle in there if need be and mm -hmm. things like that, I think that's, you know, that's a good move forward. You know, I would put the I would put the emphasis on getting the electrical straightened out right now mm -hmm. above above the other and you know make that you know it's still it's still being watched it's still going to get taken care of but if it gets done it you know we all know what it's let's you know what, what it's like trying to get people in to do anything right now you know you just you know it, you know so there's got to be some some leeway on that but from a safety standpoint let's get the you know see what needs to be done to be able to help him get the electrical squared around too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, what he had told us was he was really trying to uh, get as much of this outside stuff done before he isn't able to anymore because um, he did know that October 1st deadline was approaching so I think that's kind of where his focus has been. Um, and we can make that clear to him that we want to make sure that that electrical stuff gets buttoned up here pretty quick. Yeah. I don't think that'll be a problem. I mean, most of the stuff that's in there now, it, it's minor stuff. Um, you know, he has a section that he needs to insulate and sheetrock, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's, um, you know, overall we were watching it to make sure, because we knew he would get the place fixed up uh, right off. And then our concern was, would it stay in that mm -hmm. shape or that condition? And it, it seems to be as though it's, it's holding, so that's good. All right, so Don, do we need to do anything differently? Uh, have uh, October first an addendum done to the uh, order? I did check with the attorney today, and you actually don't need to do anything. You don't even need to make a motion if you don't okay. want. Because essentially, you're just not taking action on the order that you've already. Signed. Well, the, the, the only I, I the, think the only want. issue I have with that is that that's kind of gets us into where we how we got into some of the rules. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and having an order that we're not enforcing, I would much rather amend the order yeah, than, I, I than don't have know an you, order that we're saying we're not going to enforce because then it's okay. You, that's what got us into the Because it's so many years back that this has been going on. I would need to check with Zach on that. He was pretty clear that um, it was to probably just stay as is and just you guys don't take action on it. Um, I would think that it can be amended. I, I, would, I think would think that would you'd want to at order. least note that you, yeah. you extended it or whatever. Yeah, I would do that because I'm yeah. with Ralph. I think if you leave it open ended, that that's uh, problematic. Yeah. So what if we make a motion to give him like till November first? It gives him at least another month and a half. Hopefully things well, are. Well, the order the order right, right now is it includes 1st. both the it, yeah, but it also includes the the junkyard. Mm -hmm. What we what we want to do is we you know we want to make sure that the electrical is resolved by you know October first is probably out of the question. So call that November first, but the junkyard. Through till, uh, say, July of next year. Uh, even, can I make a suggestion? Um, October of next year, only because you've got to actually see this. I mean, mm. he's taken a lot of the small stuff mm. out. There's still, he's working on the vehicles now. There's probably 30 vehicles. Oh, yeah, at least. You know, there's a and locomotive, yeah. there's big pieces of equipment. He's selling some of those. Um, but July 1st, it's going to be okay. 
May is when you're going to be able to get in there because it's wet and it's going to, it's this. As long as he's making progress. Yeah. And what, what has happened in this process is uh, Alex and myself, along with Wayne Jones, who's our fire inspector, go. And Jared's been fairly open with us yeah. af right. after the first kind of rough start that mm -hmm. we had. But he's been fairly open. He's like, come in, this, I'll show you what I've done. Um, and then we follow up after each visit with a letter that says, we've noticed this, your next priority should be this, this, and this. And that seems to be working well. Because you're not overwhelming them. And, and so yeah, so I'm, so. I'm suggesting, with, as Rolf said, that we send him a letter to you know, say that this meeting's occurred and set the new deadline and be, make it a realistic deadline. You can debate what that is. And uh, and continue the process. Yes, with ongoing and. Yeah. You may need to hold another public hearing and go through the whole process of notification. And everything. Is that what is that what Phil said? No, he didn't say that. But it's going to. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a new order because there isn't really. You can't really amend this because you've essentially said this is this is the deadline. Um, and I think if you do a new order, you're going to have to do a new dangerous buildings public hearing. Do the notifications, the civil service, the letter, um, go through that. And so it's probably going to be another thousand dollars, I'd say, to do that. Which is like why I think the attorney said just leave it as is. But why don't I check on that? Um, I can get that information tomorrow. We'll can let you guys. Well, they can, they can set the date, nonetheless. Yeah. It's just oh, a question absolutely. of whether you notice him or not of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you guys can totally set the date. I just don't. I don't know if we would have a new in order for that but we can find that out well we can always put it on the october agenda too you know what i mean because yes. he's only so far so if the information you can find out bring it back to us for october mm -hmm. and then we can do whatever yes yeah. i do want to do that yeah. okay all right so yeah okay. november 1st is, if we can just yeah if you guys talk to him all right all right you also done consideration of Mark Childs to the planning board. Yeah, Mark is here. If you'd like to Hi. talk to him. You go up to the, because this is being recorded at home right now. At all the homes. Mark Childs from Tenney Hill. Um, just a little background on myself. Um, work for Barrett Made Architecture and Construction uh, as a senior project manager. Um, I always wanted to be part of the planning board because I like like to um, be a part of keeping Raymond great. And um, there was an opening, and it's kind of that simple. It's like I'd love to do that. <laughs> so um, that's about it. Have any, any questions for him? Not yet. No? You, have you done much on the shoreland zoning stuff before? Or? Absolutely. Yep. I was a, a contractor myself for a while. Um, built a couple homes. Um, worked with Ski a couple years back, mm -hmm. and we did tons of lake homes in Gray, um, up in Norway. Um, very familiar with the, with the shoreland zones. Uh, built on Sebago, a couple, a couple buildings. Mm -hmm. um, very familiar with the codes, RC. Construction processes and mm -hmm. standards. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I move to uh, appoint Mark Childs to the planning board. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for stepping, stepping up. up. I think Sue will have to swear at you at some point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Teresa, uh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention that I'll have your wa the warrants available for the board to circulate in and sign tomorrow, okay. probably about 11 o'clock. Okay. I should have everything into the system. I, I totally forgot to mention. Nope. That. Good. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. All right, Alex. Back up again. CEO permits updates. Can you also give an update on that car dealership on 302? Yes. Um, can we start with that? Yeah, I'm noticing a lot of cars down there. So, I can't remember if I gave you guys the update last time that they were moving. No, you told that? me about it, but... Okay, so um, after the meeting, I went down basically the next day 
um, and said, listen guys, what's going on? There's like 50 cars here at this point. Um, and I did speak with the owner and he said, yeah, basically we're leaving, we're leaving town. Um, they've decided to relocate to another town. I don't know if it was their decision, the landlord's decision, I don't know any of the backstory behind that. Basically, what the story I got was, they have a hauler that they haul cars out with. People drop cars off, other companies drop junk cars off. They haul cars out with their hauler. Their hauler's broken down. So that's why, unless they sell a car, or someone comes and buys a car from them, and takes it out of the junkyard, it stays. Uh, which is why the cars are piling up. Um, the story I got was that the hauler would be fixed in the next few days and they would start to be moving cars to their new location. So I gave it a week or two, um, kept it watching it. It a couple it. weeks. Yeah, yeah um, I went down the end of last week um, and was hoping to see most of the cars gone. Hasn't happened, so now we'll do the NLV because it seems as though it's been, they said they were going to be out by the end of the month and it doesn't look like that's going to happen um, unless they you know, move everything out real quick, but at the pace it's going, I don't think it's gonna happen. So we'll just go forward with the notice of violation and we'll just see what happens. I just know there's a lot more cars that are lined up there now and you look back, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I was kind of hoping it would resolve itself, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. So. Okay. So we'll go that route. Um, I did get that going. Um, that should be done this week. So we'll okay. get that delivered to them, sent to them through certified mail. And, and that'll basically say they have 30 days to get within compliance, okay. which is under 20 cars. So. All right. Do you want me to run through this? Um, you guys, it was in the packet, so I don't want to bore you guys with unnecessary information, but um, I can give you a general overview if you want. Yes. Yeah, I think a, a general overview is good because yep. that gets it that gets it out on the tape. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is you know I do this every quarter. Um, this was uh, specifically April through June, uh, which uh, you know is usually one of the busier. Usually April through July and um, July through uh, you know beginning of October. That's kind of the, the two busier quarters of the year. Um, so we are kind of pretty much on with. Uh, you know, on pace with 2020, we we're up on uh, a few of the different permits and down by a couple on, a, on a one or two of them. But uh, overall, we're kind of staying ahead of where we were uh, previous years. 2019, uh, for the last like seven years, I think I've gone back, uh, 2019 is still the record year. Uh, I think we'll probably come close to touching it this year. Um, with permits issued, that's permits issued. Um, so, uh, you know, permit revenue, we did have a couple big permits that quarter, so you'll notice it's double of what it was the previous year. Um, all it takes is a couple big uh, mansion renovations uh, and you, you know, the permit revenues go up quite a bit. Um, the renovation permits are usually the more expensive ones. So if you have a million or two million dollar renovation for a house, the permit fee is pretty high. Um, so I think that's that's what we experienced. We had uh, one not too far from here that was a pretty substantial renovation. Um, you know, the rest of it, you know, we had quite a few projects close out. You can see there's a pretty substantial list of uh, COs issued. A lot of, and that's common for the spring because a lot of the you know, camps are done in the winter and they like to have them finished and ready to go for use in the spring. And then uh, I think we're at right now one, two, three, four, five, kind of, I think we're at like six open violations as of July 1st. We've added a couple more since, which would be on the next quarterly report, but, um, and we've dropped off, I think, a couple of these. Um, Obviously the big news, Chris started last week um, and it was basically hit the ground running day one. So I blocked off a few hours in the morning for him to say hi to everyone and then his schedule's been <laughs> pretty much full ever since. Um, and he right now has been focusing mostly on enforcement. So he's been doing a backlog of complaints uh, and some other violations that we've had on the list. I think we had a list about 30 or so long violations around town that I was aware of. Um, 
So he's been focusing on that, uh, and we're crossing, crossing those off the list. Um, which, you know, now that we're, we've ramped up enforcement, it's going to, you know, the log jam just kind of keeps moving. So, um, you know, now we may see ZBA be a little bit busier. There may be some um, administrative appeals, and that's, you know, when people appeal uh, a notice of violation. You guys will probably likely be seeing, um, you know, some enforcement stuff coming your way within the next six months, I would guess. Um, we've got a couple that may elevate to that status here pretty quick. Um, you know, we're able to kind of take care of most of them, but you know, there's a few that, that may end up in front of you guys. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it right now. Um, we're definitely, it's been busy. We've changed a lot in the last three weeks, a lot. Good. Good. Wow. For good. For it's good. It's all good stuff. It is. But, I'm just, um, this is crazy. I, I've been able to get instantaneous relief as the uh, super code secretary when people elevate their concerns <laughs> to me. Yeah. I'm able to walk down the hall and get engagement instantly now, which is nice. So yeah, essentially what's happened is Chris is doing everything out of the office. So I've had zero out of the office inspections or appointments this so far this week. I um, mean, you know, we're day one really. I have one scheduled for tomorrow, but that's it for the week. So for the rest of the day, I'm in the office, where normally I was out. So I would be out of the office five or six times a day. Um, you know, I'd be in the office four hours, out of the office five hours. I mean, it, it, it's really freed up a lot of time for me to be there. So what's, what Dawn's saying is, you know, if we you get send Chris instantly out to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, people that come in can see somebody in there. So we were, we're scheduling three or, three or four days out in some situations for inspections. Now we're scheduling the same day, wow. next day, always. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, and we're only a weekend. We started a week ago, so. But people, you know, people want service or in the service business and uh, it's very busy and, you know, and it's good, good to be able to deliver that kind of service. And, and I mean, the violation thing is another thing. I mean, it's, it's important to uphold the integrity of the ordinances and that's what we're doing. And, you know, I've had a number of things, as you know, you've got some things, I've got some things on my mind, and so we've communicated those to him. He's on those, he's very good at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and the in-office presence, people coming in, walk-ins, you know, welcome, and to have you there to, and you've been spending time with citizens walking them through the, the process of their various projects, you know, renovations, new permits. That's what we do, and I, I'm really happy, and I think it's a great move that we've got him, and I appreciate the support of the Board of Selectmen, and I think we're, as I say, fortunate to have him, and. Yeah. How long we have him, I don't know, but yeah, that, we'll that'll see. be another thing. I mean, as he, you know, retires from Wyndham and comes comes to us, and so while we do have him, though, I think we're going to make the most of this. It's exciting. It's good to see the department is now being run the way it really should be at this point. It's as before. It was you know we weren't able to we weren't able to enforce the ordinances we have. Which why do you have them if you can't enforce them? So well, the, the, the problem was between the crush of new work and and the and the violations that are that happen on a regular basis and and people who unfortunately we have people who do things without the benefit of a permit. You know that's the violation piece, unreported mm -hmm. and reported. I mean, I, I, you were overwhelmed. Oh yeah. I think we're going to see a lot more coming our way because Wyndham is just just crazy right now. It really is. Um, do you guys have any plans for about the water? What's that? Do you guys have any plans about the water on Sebago Lake? Checking that out? Um, yes. Um, you don't have to say anywhere if you don't want to. No, no. There's, um, you know, like I said, we have a list about 30 or so long uh, of stuff that we know about and, um, you know, we're, we're adding to that daily. I mean, we cross stuff off, we add stuff to it. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, there's going to be no shortage of work as far as the violations go. Um, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, we, we had one today that Chris spent an hour or two on, or probably an hour, um, was a flip that they just didn't get permits on. So now we got to go back and start with them all over from square one and, and after the fact permit everything. Um, which would have been much easier for us if they had just gotten the permits from the start, because um, now it's a little bit more work. They have to pay a double permit fee, so there is, um, you know, there is a little bit of a, a, a penalty to that, as well as the headache of probably having to delay a closing um, or lo possibly lose a sale. Mm. So, um, you know, it's stuff like that that, uh, you know, that 
that shows up unannounced. That's a real estate agent coming in, looking at a file and saying, they just renovated this entire house and the last permit in here is from 2003. And then we have to reroute the entire day to try and, you know, help them resolve the situation. So. Do you see how he Chris? He sends them out to be the bad guy. And Alex. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You say a, a little, a little penalty. That's a double permit fee. Yeah. Double permit fee. I mean, it, it might end up being, you know, it might have been a fifteen hundred dollar permit. Now it's going to be three grand. Right. And and in the first, you know, they know that when they did that, they knew what they were doing. They did that with intent. So. But a three thousand dollar permit on a seven hundred thousand dollar house is right. Very, very minor. I mean, that's less than the commission they're going to pay for the real estate agent. So. Right. Right. Alex, thank you for this report. Yeah. This no great. Any questions? I don't do this. Raymond only grew by 100 people in the last decade. Are we going to see 100 people move in this year? Um, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Um, the planning board has uh, granted preliminary approval for a 26 unit um, development off of 85. That's still probably six months out before it's ready to go. Um, Where is that? You know where, um, uh, right at the bottom, there's a, the water main came up so far, yeah. only maybe like a, a quarter mile in, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, and it's on, if you're going down 85, it's on the left-hand side. Yeah, like so the one. entrance to it will be around no, 20, below that. 25 yeah. Webbs Mills Road, I think, is, is roughly where the driveway is, so it's but pretty that close. Was, that, that was um, contemplated a number of years ago, and then the, the water main went there, and then the economy went in. Yeah. Went. <laughs> yep, so it's back, and, and that's, you know, probably six months out from being done. We have another nine-lot subdivision that's, um, you know, it's probably middle stage of approval. That's probably going to be done in the next six months. Um, so if the, the market stays the way it is, I think both of those will be moving. Rolling Brook is um, now under construction. I mean, we've issued six or seven permits for new single-family homes in there. I know that they're advertising the all the time for, for new homes over there, yeah. Yeah, which one's Rolling Brook? That's One, up near Casco. Yeah, 121. Yep. Plains Road, it's almost right there. Is okay. that the street that goes in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what about Chase? I know they have a couple. Yep, so that one is, that's Chase, and then they also have Valley View, I believe it's called, on um, yeah. Valley Road. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, John says they plan on starting that subdivision in six months. So okay. we'll see. Uh, that one does have a sunset provision, so it would expire if they don't start within a certain amount of time. Uh, and then we have uh, Tenney Hill Extension, which is I believe an eight lot subdivision that they've uh, built one house in. They're looking to build the rest of that out. So Will that realistically- Will that go into Casco? What's that? Will that go into Casco? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. nope, that's all. It's on basically the town line, but okay. all of the houses are in Raymond. So wow. I, you know, I mean, there's a possibility we could see at least 30 to 50. Mm -hmm. I think we will see at least 30 to 50. Yeah. Uh, well, not including yeah. some mm -hmm. of the renovations. All right. Right. Thank All right. you, Alex. Thank you. The comment I would make, though, is although you ha are not seeing, you know, exponential growth in year-round population, I think post revalue you're going to see the tail of the tape when you see what's happened to the value, because a lot of what's happening in Raymond is happening with the seasonal properties. Yes, and Wyndham having a um, growth ordinance. Uh, and Westbrook also has uh, some limitations in place for limiting residential growth a lot of that's moving this way so. well yeah that that's well now we're seeing it come our way but but i think if you look at what's happened over the last 10 years and uh and what's happened possibly without benefit of permit and other other w ways things have happened mm -hmm. you mean like conversion of season i mean houses? like no. let's wait and see what happens after the reval that's what i mean yeah various methods of, of renovation and things that have occurred yeah. Wait and see. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you. There'll be other measures that'll come into play that will show you some measures of growth. I think. All right. Consideration of a new road name, Meridian Lane. Yeah. And Taylor couldn't be here tonight, so I told her I would speak to it. It's a driveway off Myron Hall Road, and this is more to kind of unconfuse that so that it's much easier for emergency personnel to get up there and to understand where they're going. We have to accept it's the name driveway. change. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. Um, consideration of annual update to general assistance ordinance. Jenny. Hello. I wasn't going to do that. 
I can do it if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wrote the letter. And so, okay. and it was a nice here, letter. Right? Yes. <laughs> you, want, you want me to do this, Jenny? Yeah, because I didn't bring any of the papers. So, so basically every year the Maine Municipal Association puts out a model ordinance and they do a survey of the cost of uh, basic necessities by county and give us an outline of those. And so rather than us do all of that effort and work ourselves, we adopt the model ordinance of MMA and the uh, recommendations that they make for the um, maximums for general assistance, basic necessities, commodities, and so you need to certify that ordinance, model ordinance, and, the, and their recommendations for uh, assistance levels. I'll so make a motion to accept the ordinance. Second. Changes. I think Jenny filled out the form for you, the cover yeah. form. Yeah. All in favor? All right. Nice job, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I like to tell you. <laughs> All right, public comment. Would you like to say anything? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> All right, you have public comment? Select me comment. Nope. Okay, there is, never mind. I was gonna say, how are we gonna figure out what to say? So we're all saying the same thing regarding the RSU, but never mind. All right, town manager's report. Okay, so I was gonna give you a report on the new assistant uh, CEO. We already done that once, we crossed that off. Um, we've set up, or Kathy specifically has set up the OPER uh, portal. Kathy, I should tell you, um, as long as we're recognizing people, has done a great job throughout the pandemic in a number of ways, but she's been kind of our go-to person on a lot of grants, and as you know, she did a great job in securing grants to support the food pantry. She stepped up most recently on the OPER, uh, the American Rescue Plan, um, and she's setting up the portal along with Cherise. And Rita's been involved, I'm involved, and so so we're waiting now to see if we get our money, around a half million dollars, and so that's in play. And uh, it's coming to us, Rolf will appreciate this one, with all deliberate municipal speed, it's coming, <laughs> right? It's supposed to get half now and half right. in another year. Yeah, so we should get that pretty, pretty soon, and we should get word as to whether our plan has been accepted, and then we'll, we'll bring that back for selectman approval once that occurs. Right? So, so that's happening, and uh, she's not here tonight, but I told her I was going to recognize her, and I also want to thank Rolf. He's been kind of our go-to person for interview panels. We have those all the time now. I like that process. <laughs> Adopted that way of selecting people maybe 30 years ago. We start with a you know, preliminary panel comprised usually of, uh, you know, the uh, department head, if it's a, if it's a, you know, a staff person, <coughs> or if not, it's usually the HR director. Often the HR director, anyhow, you know, a uh, maybe, maybe somebody who's a professional in the field, elected official, sometimes you know, usually one of the selectmen, or maybe a professional from another community. So we do that for our first round. Second round is usually the HR director and the town manager. But we've been successful lately. We got our new finance director, thankfully, and we have our assistant uh, ACO, and we also got our parks and recreation public works foreman. So we have all of our main positions that we were trying to fill, filled, which is amazing in this market. And so, while well, I'm making a, a bit of an announcement, we are, uh, you know, still seeking uh, candidates though. We're, we're seeking a uh, full-time uh, paramedic firefighter and we're seeking uh, per diem firefighter EMTs. And that's really urgent. So Bruce wanted me to make sure that we got that out. And those ads are running now. And so uh, hopefully we'll get some candidates there. But I wanted to call out Rita Terrio, who has done a really great um, job yeah. with the HR function. And she's also been somebody, uh, along with Laurie Ann Wilson, who's the finance director yeah. in New Gloucester, who has kept us running while we had our previous uh, finance director uh, depart and, and waiting for our new finance director. So although Rita can't watch local access TV and she's not here, I wanted to thank her for her work in, in the HR function and also in uh, you know, keeping us going on the finance front. She so, gave up her vacation week to come in and help. And, and she gave up vacation to come in and help, and she's she's really done a great job. Yeah, so thank you, Rita. Nice. And things are going really great. We're we're back to, you know, being staffed up, and Good. and uh, we're getting ready for winter. I sent you a picture in Nate's uh, new truck, which is about uh, I think he said it was one hundred eight thousand dollars. So we got about half of that from the town of Casco, roughly. A little less than half of that for the old one, and so so he's getting ready for winter. And uh, believe it or not, that's just about here again. So, uh, 
So, yeah. so you know, things are things are going well, as Ralph pointed out. I mean, we, despite the pandemic, we're in good shape financially. So, so that's always nice. Yes. And uh, that's a, that's enough, I guess. Good night. Good for me. Can you confirm the dates for meetings. Confirm the dates. Okay, um, October twelfth and November 9th. But now we also have October fourth and, and October fifth, right? And then we have the upcoming holiday schedule, October 11th, Columbus Day. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Can I have, are you good on those dates? No. All right. Can we have a motion to go into executive session, considering consideration of poverty abatement request? Make a motion to go into executive ses session under Title I, Section 4056F. And 841 Have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Hi move, there. Move to come out of executive session. Second. All in favor? All right. A uh, decision was made, made to have Don look at the community uh, assistance fund assistance fund and use some money for that in the amount we we agreed to to help resolve two years worth of the taxes on there can I have a second oh you need a motion he just that was the motion okay oh second no. all in favor okay have a motion to adjourn move to adjourn Second. Second. All in favor?